what's going on guys and girls in today's video i'll be showing you a new method that i've been using to write more live and up-to-date blog posts that you can't necessarily write using ChatGPT by itself because ChatGPT is only trained on information up to 2021 so the workflow includes using perplexity ai in addition with ChatGPT. So the first thing that you want to do is head over to perplexity.ai. I'll leave a link in the description below this video. If you haven't used this tool before, it is a very, very cool, innovative, and very useful tool. Essentially, it's like Google on steroids. You can ask it any question and you'll be able to get an answer back. But instead of just getting a search engine result, you'll be able to get the actual answer from different sources and you're able to ask related questions. You're able to see those sources and you're able to do much more um, deep research compared to just using Google on its own. So let's say, for example, we wanted to write a blog post about the best things to do in Toronto, specifically for summer of 2023. Again, we wouldn't be able to write that with ChatGPT, but we can start um, doing our research and gathering content on Perplexity AI. So I'm going to start by searching up the best things to do in Toronto, summer of 2023. And as you can see here, we're going to get a summary of the uh, most exciting things that people often do during the summer times in Toronto. So we get about 10 different things in which we can um, take part in in um, summer of 2023 in Toronto. If you wanted to add more to your list, it's very easy to use. Just go ahead and tell Perplexity to add more. And as you can see here, it's added about um, 10 more. So you have a total of 18 different um, things in which you can do in Toronto of summer 2023. So you see here, it's very, very easy to use Perplexity AI. And there's also some related questions. If you wanted to write an article or if you wanted to include um, questions about what are some outdoor concerts, what are some popular tourist attractions, what are some good restaurants you can also go ahead and get that information and put it all together within your blog post so if you're creating live and up-to-date articles i would start with perplexity then i want to go ahead and copy all of that content over from perplexity ai and now i'm going to head over to chat gpt and also if you would like us to write you a free blog post of your choice check out the link in the description below this video i've been writing tons of articles for clients and i've gotten really good at writing high quality content for any niche and any topic so if you want to check out that service for completely free i'll leave a link in the description below this video now let's get back to today's video so once you've gathered all of your information you can go to ChatGPT and copy that information over and then formulate a blog post or what we can do is we can ask perplexity ai to use this information to create an in-depth and informative blog post and as you can see here it's actually taking that information and creating a blog post for us so it's nice that we can do all of the work in perplexity, but I find that you're not really able to get um, typical or, or what you would like to have within a blog post from perplexity because it's really made to do research and search on different uh, search queries. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy over the content. It looks as though it reduced it to only 13. So I'm going to copy over the original content, which was about 18 different things that you can do in Toronto. So let's copy this over. We're going to head over to ChatGPT. We're going to first head over to the GPT-4 model and we're going to use the web pilot mode. I'm going to paste in everything that we got back from Perplexity AI. So now I'm going to tell web pilot to do its own research and add more things to do in the summer of 2023 that was not mentioned above. So we want to get some more um, research here about things in which you can do in Toronto. And to do so, we have to use the web pilot mode because that's the only way that ChatGPT is able to read the live web. I'm running into some issues with WebPilot, but I've ran this output before, and this is what it looks like. So I took all of the content that I got back from Perplexity AI in terms of what to do in Toronto, and then I told um, the AI to, um, then I told ChatGPT using the WebPilot mode to um, give us an expanded blog post and add in your own content. And we were able to get about 15 things in which you can do in Toronto with these citations. So then what I did was, I took this content, which we got back, which was expanded from Perplexity AI and WebPilot, and then I opened up chat GPT, the GPT 3.5 mode, because I find that that works a lot better. I pasted in all of that content, and the prompt that I used was I told the AI to rewrite and expand this blog post, include lists, tables, links, and more information about this blog post, include more relevant information and topics about this blog post topic, and always write in Markdown and please write in English language. And as you can see here, we got a full article about the best things to do in Toronto in 2023 summer. We get the table of contents, we get over 15 things in which you can do, and you get a nice summary of each um, specific thing. Now, if you wanted to actually go ahead and expand this blog post, because I think this was about 
um, 800 to 1,000 words. So it's about 800 words. But if you wanted to, you can expand this by telling the AI to expand each section. So first, I told it to expand the first section, which is about exploring the Toronto islands. And as you can see here, we're able to get much, much more um, in-depth content around that. Second, we talked about the CN Tower. Instead of having three or four sentences, we're able to get a nice summary of the CN Tower. So if you went ahead and just repeated that process, so let's say, for example, each one of these expansion will give you about 300 words. So if you have about 15 different sections, that would be a very, very long blog post. So just to reiterate, if you'd like to write more live and up-to-date blog posts using Perplexity AI and ChatGPT, you first need to start on Perplexity AI. We're going to enter the blog post topic in which we'd like to write about. For this example, we'll be writing about the latest AI tools released in July of 2023. So again, here we see um, some different, we don't really get the tools, but we're able to get um, some blog posts which talks about those specific tools. I've refined the search by asking Perplexity AI to list the most popular AI tools of July 2023. And as you can see here, we're getting um, some AI tools, pretty cool. And if you want to get more tools, just go ahead and tell it to add more. And as you can see, you're able to get much more tools. So just by taking a look at this, I do know that some of these are not necessarily from July of 2023. But again, this um, is pretty cool at allowing us to write a more up to date information. So once you have the information from Perplexity AI, then you want to head over to ChatGPT. First thing, if you want to get more information, then I would use the plugin mode and just ask it to give me a list of the most popular AI tools of July 2023. So essentially the same search query, we're going to use that on um, ChatGPT. And then we're going to combine the list that we get from ChatGPT and Perplexity AI into one blog post. Again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm having some issues with WebPilot, but essentially, let's say, for example, they were able to give you a list like this. What I would do is I would copy over that list and I'm going to combine that with ChatGPT using the GPT 3.5 mode because I find that that's working a little bit better. So I've also went ahead and copied over the content from Perplexity AI into ChatGPT and now I'm going to prompt it to create a blog post. First, I'm going to generate an outline. So I've told the AI to use this information provided, write an in-depth, engaging and informative blog post outline. So let's generate an outline first, and then we can take that outline to write the full article. And of course, the AI has not listened. It's just went ahead and written the full article. So that's OK. Um, let's go ahead and let it finish. And then if the article is fine, then we can use this. OK, so I don't really like that output. So let's go ahead and run it again to get a better output from GPT 3.5. So I've pasted in all of the content from Perplexity AI and the content that we got back from Google. But ideally, you would like to get back the content from WebPilot. And now we're going to ask the AI to create an in-depth blog post outline for this topic uh, and always write in Markdown. So let's go ahead and see if we're able to get a outline here. OK, so that's good. We're getting an outline and then we can use this outline to generate the full article. OK, so here is the outline that we got back. It looks really, really good. We get an intro. They talk about the different tools and we get a conclusion at the end. So now what we can do is we can just tell the AI to use this um, outline to write the full article. So I've given it a simple prompt, which is use this outline and the information above, write the full article, always include lists, tables and bolded content and always write in Markdown and be as in depth as possible when writing. OK, so here's the full article that we were able to get back talks about Adobe, Audio Labs, and so on. I like that it's very well formatted. We have a list, we have bolded words, it looks really nice. And we get about 10 different tools. And this looks to be maybe about a 1000 words of content. Let's go ahead and do a quick check in terms of word count. So it's about 817 words. And again, if you wanted to get more uh, content, what you can do is we can tell the AI to just write specifically for the first section and then after it's finished the first section write the second section so for example i told the ai to write the first section by itself and this is about 200 words let's go ahead and compare that to what we got before so this was the original first section this seems to be a little bit less so this was about 166 so you get some more content when you write section by section and you're able to get a much longer and more in-depth article. So I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video and hope that you learned how to write more live and up-to-date um, blog posts and more relevant topics. If you did get some value from this video, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.